Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am because I got something I've been wanting for a long time from Banggood. Let's check it out. Don't want to get out any paperwork or anything like that. It's a box. And the box does not give away what it is, so we're just going to have to open it. And it's some bubble wrap. And it is this thing. This is a thermal imaging camera. Okay, so I waited for you guys to actually play with this thing, but um, I did want to give you a little bit of information about it. Uh, this is a 320 by 240 screen, and um, the resolution of the actual infrared sensor is 32 by 24, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but most of the cheap ones that you'll find are 8x8, eight eight. so this has significantly higher resolution than those. I mean, obviously, as you go up into the higher end, there's way higher resolutions, but this thing runs $125, which doesn't sound cheap, but as I tell you guys all the time, we are in the golden age of this kind of stuff. Like, this technology was unobtainium three years ago. The fact that you could get it on Banggood for $125 is a steal. Um, it can measure negative 40 Celsius to 300 Celsius with plus or minus two degrees. Um, refreshes eight times a second, no calibration. It has a built-in camera that can store a hundred photos and basically you just plug the thing in and, um, you know, it just shows up as a USB drive and it's got a rechargeable battery. You can charge it in an hour and a half and it will run for four hours. So I brought the camera way down so that you guys could take a look at this thing with me. Um, first thing we'll do is we're going to take a look at a Raspberry Pi. This thing has just been sitting on. It's actually got the Raspad OS in it, but I thought it'd be kind of interesting to see. Now, as you can tell, not a super high resolution, but we can definitely tell where the CPU is. As my finger comes in the picture and comes out of the picture, you can definitely get way down there on the CPU and see a hot spot actually on the CPU itself. Um, yeah, and feeling that the thing is pretty warm. So if I pull it back out here, you're not going to get detailed information on the rest of the components, but you can definitely see if there's a component that's particularly hotter than something else. Um, to kind of give us some contrast, even more contrast, I'm going to put this ice block here. And you can see that we've got, uh, it gets super blue where there's ice and it's red where the CPU is. I've got a Yankee candle that's back here kind of tunneling a little bit, but you can see the way the flame is centered inside the candle, which I think is pretty cool. Now, I'm sure you guys noticed this already, but you can see the, um, this temperature over here is the center of the unit. So as I put that little target right above the um, hotspot on the CPU, I can see that I'm reading 35, 37 degrees. And it tells you here that the maximum in this frame is 37 degrees and the minimum is like I'm around four degrees. And as I come over here, I'll pick up more of the ice pack. So I'm at, you know, one, two degrees on the ice pack, plus or minus two. Um, so then I'll, if I want to take a picture of it, all I have to do is push the button and what it's going to do is it's actually going to save all the screenshot stuff too. So as I come back here to this thing, I can see that I have the minimum, I have the maximum. So if you're in an awkward situation, if you're under a car or reaching, I don't know, if you're looking in some kind of weird place, you can just snap a picture and come back to it later, which is kind of cool. So I feel like it'd be foolish of me to not take this thing apart. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to start pulling these screws out. I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch me doing this. Oh gosh. So the thing does use a lithium pack non-removable uh, rated at 1000 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts, 3.7 watt hours, uh, manufactured 11 of 2020. Uh, here is the board. Let's see if we can get an idea what that chip is. That thing has an STM32F0407 uh, um, in it, so that's interesting. Full STM microcontroller in it. Uh, 
Yeah, we'll pull out the board and take a look at the other side. It's got these double-ended binding posts that I'm sure are going to make it a royal pain in the butt to put it back together, so you're welcome. Okay, well that's the only part you care about right here. There's, there's some thermal tape taping this thing together. So I have seen this thing as an individual unit exactly like this before with these buttons. Uh, so I'm pretty sure you can buy this as a standalone thing. We've got our, uh, what is it, 2.4 inch screen, 320 by 240 on that side. And yeah, you've got the STM microcontroller um, with the, what's it say, IR Max Bat version 1.4. Uh, so yeah, that is the camera. I mean, I don't really know what I expected to see on the other side. So you guys probably noticed when uh, I took this thing apart, I didn't notice till I went to put it back together that I had actually knocked this ground wire off. If you look at that, I mean, they're fairly thin wires and that is kind of a, just a blob of solder there. Um, so again, they don't really expect you to take this thing apart. I'm not going to ding the manufacturer because it didn't survive my heavy-handed teardown but um, I did knock it apart so I'm gonna go ahead and fix it um, I'm gonna use some silver well I'm gonna see if it just melts back on first maybe I'll tin that let's see I'm sure they use something like this okay let's try yeah I might cut that a little shorter that looks yeah kind of suspect in that area All right, no solder bridging or anything like that. We are back together. Not quite as perfect of a round blob of solder as they had, but it's on. So uh, the uh, reassembly of this thing is actually more interesting than the disassembly of this thing. Uh, you know, it's built with all these little layers of stuff. Um, it's almost like it's 3D printed. But um, so you've got like some acrylic, some acrylic, and then this spacer here. I thought this might have even been multiple pieces of acrylic. Um, but it definitely is a little bit of a pain in the butt to put back together. So you can see there's a bunch of standoffs, and there's standoffs on each side to kind of deal with the layer. So I figured out it makes sense to put all the screws and ferrule, or I, they're like double-sided standoffs, on on one side, and then sort of sandwich the next set of standoffs on and that'll hold the board in place and then because when you put this on these things have little holes in them so you kind of have to slide that and get them all to stay so you want everything locked in before you try to assemble it or otherwise you're just going to be chasing little parts around and uh, i think there's even three different size screws in here which is kind of funny for like one little device like this to have three different sizes of screws Alright, so that seems good enough. And now we can go like this and reassemble this part. Get that wire out of the way. There we go. And then we can drop these two double ended standoffs in here. Those look like they might use longer screws now. I feel like, yeah, so this already has the standoffs on it. So what we can do, what we probably should do now is lock these two standoffs in. And that might be a little tricky because um, there's nothing to really grab. Okay, so yeah, these standoffs don't come all the way through, which means that we need to use the longer screws here. So um, I want to pin these wires down. And as you can see, there's two longer screws that are going to go in this one because there's nothing else in there now. I'm a little concerned those things are just going to spin, so I'm going to hit those uh, with the electric screwdriver. Yeah, that thing was spinning. I mean, the screw spun 15 times for every thread I went in. Let 
I don't know that I ever got fully torqued. I don't really know what that's supposed to grab onto. There's not, there's not a screw on the other side. So yeah, I don't think there was really anything for that screw ever to go into. It was just sort of taking up space. I love this screwdriver, by the way. If you're on the fence about whether you want something like this, this is just such a great screwdriver. I've spent a lot of time working, doing hard jobs where I beat my hands up, and this thing is just such a blessing. There we go. So it is back together to about the same state that it was when I got it. Let's make sure it turns on. Probably should have done that before I put the whole thing together. So you got to push and hold for a little while, but it's on. It works. So what do I think about this thing? If this is something you've always wanted, if you always want to play with thermal imaging, then I think this is a nice starting point. Uh, you're not going to be able to come in here and tell that, you know, this resistor, you know, is, is hot and that one isn't, but you can definitely come in and get an overall picture of what's going on. You can get a good idea of contrast. Um, you know, the other area I think I would use this a lot is breaker boxes. Uh, you can go in there and just, without physically touching anything, get an idea if something is hot, if any wires are hotter than the other ones, if any breakers are hotter than the other ones, that sort of thing. So um, overall, I think it's a really cool tool. It's in a, a pretty basic package. It looks like a bunch of layers that have been screwed together. Um, they sell these things as kits. You could buy it a little bit cheaper as a kit. Um, looks a little bit more like a camera when you buy the kit, but this thing has the big old battery in it and all that and, uh, and seems to be just a little bit more user friendly in the end. Again, not necessarily professional packaging, but the fact that we can even have something like this at this price point is pretty cool. So I'll put a link in the description and, uh, yeah. So, hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.